Uh, let's go to um, the phones. You are calling from a 619 area code. Who's this? Hey, Sam. It's Alex from Nevada. Hi, Alex. How are you? I always get a little nervous when I'm I see 619. Good. <laughs> I'm doing well. So this past weekend, I went to the Nevada State Convention. And um, coming out of it, I became a at-large delegate alternate. So I'm going to the National Convention of Philadelphia. Congratulations. Now, can you give us some insight into what went on there? Um, I have watched, I have to say now, I have watched, I think, three or four, I don't know, 15, 20-minute long videos. I have read multiple reports of it, uh, some on Reddit, some by, uh, one by John Ralston, uh, and, and I, I, for the life of me, can't uh, really understand what, what happened there. And I'm not frankly sure that what happened there was, um, has the implications that it does, but I mean, give me your sense of, of, of what happened there. Basically, I mean, it's kind of a combination of a local and a national phenomenon. I mean, the local aspect is I talked to some party uh, people involved in the party who happen to be Sanders supporters, and there was a concern that there was a uh, a person there, uh, I believe it was the former uh, committee woman, who uh, potentially co-opted the movement, told people that there were some things hidden in process that they needed to be worried about. So there was a sense of real... Uh, they felt like they were going into the game, you know, then they were going to be cheated. So the night before there was about 30 petitions floating around. And one of them was to have the chairwoman, Roberta Lang step down. So you can't tell me that the, the Sanders supporters went in there as honest. And, and I'm a Sanders supporter, but what I'm saying is that the, the people who were frustrated, I can't, I can't believe they were being honest actors considering the fact that there was a petition the day before asking the chairwoman to step down before anything at the convention had happened. But then also, I had called in a couple of weeks ago and talked about the, the process involving the county convention. And I went to the, the state convention. I was hearing about the Clark County Convention, which is down south. And there was a lot of shenanigans. So I think a lot of Sanders supporters coming from the Clark County Conventions were upset. My county convention, there was a lot of process, but I thought everything was pretty fair and transparent. And then uh, there was a couple of moments during the uh, state convention well, I, I believe they were less than, than, than kind of transparent about what was going on. And I think the state party would say there were reasons for that, because there was unruliness and people were kind of upset already. But um, I, I think that um, the, the state Democratic Party here just needs to be, I think all sides kind of need to be honest. And if there's some Sanders supporters who were never going to support the Democratic Party moving forward anyway, then unfortunately, hopefully we can get them back. But um, I don't know how likely that is. And, and so, wait, so to be clear, you're going as a delegate uh, supporting whom? I, I'm supporting Senator Sanders as an at-large delegate alternate uh, for the state of Nevada. Okay, yeah. I mean, I, um, I, I've i been trying to wrap my, my head around it. And, it and, and in the final analysis, like, aside from the issues of process, what would have been the alternate outcome? I mean, I guess there was, like, what, 60 delegates or 64? three delegates or 68 delegates uh, from Sanders who were deemed not um, not uh, uh, legitimate or, or, or whatnot? I mean, what, what, what can you tell us about that? So basically there was, a, I, I believe, the number of 64 delegates who were not able to be seated on the Sanders side, uh, eight, number, uh, eight delegates who were not able to be seated on the Clinton side, and basically, it was a combination of two things the party put out later. It was either they didn't have updated information with the Democratic Party, which I guess there was a number of people who were able to correct that. But then the majority of people were not registered Democrats by uh, May 1st. So here in Nevada, I think there, there, is a, there is a population of people who find pride in being a registered independent. Mm -hmm. And so and a lot of this, too, is that I think information – there was opportunities to get information out there, but maybe people weren't able to attend different trainings. So right. basically there was a May 1st deadline where you need to be registered as a Democrat. And so the, the allegation was that some of these people weren't registered as a Democrat, or maybe they switched back after the caucus. But the, but the thing is, is that um, 
you know, I, I, I mean, I hate to say, you know, ring the personal responsibility button, but I mean, the rules are complicated. It's not an easy process, but people need to ask the right questions, in my opinion. And uh, there were training opportunities. The Sanders campaign, for example, did uh, numerous training opportunities, and people could have asked these questions. But yeah, I just think there's a movement of people who like to be registered as independents, and maybe they switched it back. But uh, actually, the, the person on the credentials committee is the my county's chairwoman. And she, during her, uh, you know, they're calling the minority report, she had said that these people didn't get an opportunity to explain their case. And that's the tr- lack of transparency in the process right. aspect, uh, one of the things I'm alluding to. Interesting. Well, um, uh, so what's the plan when you go to the convention? Um, I mean, what? Uh, I, go ahead. Oh, I was going to ask you. I have no idea. I don't even know what to expect. I mean, um, I went into it. And unfortunately, we weren't able to vote for at-large delegates and pleos. And so I got a call the next day from the Nevada Bernie Sanders campaign manager telling me that I got one of the positions with the at-large delegate. So uh, we were supposed to have training on Sunday, but due to all the madness, they canceled the training. So uh, I know you've been to a couple conventions, Sam. What should I expect? Uh, I have no idea what, from a delegate perspective, I mean, I think you'll go there and during that first uh, round of voting, um, your state will announce what the, what the tally is. And um, I guess it's, what was it? Um, it's uh, 20 delegates for Clinton and 15 for Sanders. Is that what the final tally was? That sounds about right. I don't have the information. Yeah. That sounds about right. And, um, and, and then, you know, you'll go around. I, you know, I don't anticipate anything other than, than that. I mean, uh, but you know, it depends on what, uh, what, what Bernie decides to do. Um, uh, we're going to charge the floor. (laughs) We're going to line people up against the fucking walls and we're going to go do the revolution. That's, Are you ready? That's one option. Uh, the other We're going to stuff just car bombs in Hillary's SUV motorcade. <laughs> We're going to take all of the county chairman and other various officials and have them do a public confession and repentance session <laughs> while they are beat with canes and various other manners of correctional methods for a social cleansing that will take place before the full Let me put it this way. In my I opinion. Would, I would not... I- I would not, if, if you're wearing glasses, I would not wear glasses to the convention. That's the big thing. That's the big tell, I think. is uh, Year zero. Uh, well, look, well, not Cambodia, but, look, but there's a lot I we will, can learn from Pol Pot. I'm, I'm planning uh, to be there, so uh, make sure you, um, uh, you know, either call in beforehand or keep an eye on the Twitter feed in the days leading up, and um, uh, you know, maybe we'll do a meetup around there or something. That sounds great. And then finally, I would just like to say that, I mean, the change to party apparatus, you got to change it from the inside. I think Senator Sanders has shown the way, and I said that last time I, was, uh, I called him to the show. you got to get inside. you got to get involved, and you can't give up. I mean, Saturday was unfortunate, and it was, it was, I, I was frustrated with a lot of the things that went down Saturday night. Uh, but um, we got to get involved. we got to get in the inside. We can't give up. And then if, if we give up, then we lose. And, yeah. and we, we're, we, we, can't, we can't lose this. So thanks for taking my call. Sam. All right. I appreciate you calling in. Hello, you. I'm Sam Cedar. Looking for smart, progressive talk that is occasionally amusing? Well, subscribe to our YouTube feed, subscribe to our podcast, like us on Facebook, and just generally enjoy us.